Good morning, everyone. My name is Xian Qingmeng from uh, Dr. Rafi Clement's group. Uh, my talk is about design and fabrication feasibility of uh, front and back diffraction gratings for thin film crystalline silicon solar cells. Okay. Uh, in my talk, I'd like to start from a brief background introduction and then go to the optical design for such a front and back diffraction gratings assisted, assisted thin film crystalline silicon solar cell and then move on to the fabrication feasibility for such double grating structure and then finally it's a conclusion. Okay, let's start from the background. Uh, as we know, in all to keep a high quantum efficiency in thin film solar cells, uh, there's, a <coughs> multi, uh, there's a light trapping schemes are considered and developed in past years. And then in my talk, we are focused on the diffraction gratings in actively year try to improve the light, light trapping and therefore to improve the final efficiency. Uh, the diffraction grating is an uh, optical component with a periodic structure. It can split and diffract, uh, diffract the incident light into several beams and uh, traveling into the di different directions. Let's take a very simple uh, uh, structure, try to introduce this part. When the incident lights go to, sorry, it's weird. okay, I don't know where's the laser. No, okay. When the incident light go to the, I, I come from the laser, it's here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Try this one. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. When the incident light goes to the backgrounding backgrounding structure, the incident light can be guided uh, can be uh, diffracted by several grating orders with a different uh, different angle. And the, it's, this kind of structure can guide the incident light, especially the red and infrared light into the material and therefore to enhance the, uh, increase the lifetime of photons and the finally, finally to increase the absorption. So uh, <coughs> in recent years, there are several, several groups in the world that try to use the diffraction grating in thin film solar cells. And in those both groups, they're using the front and back diffraction grating in once, uh, in one stack, try to improve the short current density. We see that compared to the reference stack in both groups, they are get a high, high short current density than the reference. But, <coughs> but we, we see that uh, uh, when the front and back grating use the same lattice parameter, cannot address wide absorption range, and also the front and uh, and also the optimization for the front and back rating are very interesting and uh, it's used, uh, meaningful for the thin film solar cells. So my work is based on this complex solar cell with the different uh, front and back rating with the different, uh, different lattice parameters. Let's move on to this design into details. It's, the second part is optical design for the front and back diffraction gratings assisting from crystalline silicon solar cells. Okay, and then our, my design is de uh, dependent on the FDDD ap approach and uh, the AM1.5 sol global solar spectra is considered from 300 to 1,100 nanometer on the normal incident light for the thin film crystal silicon solar cell. The stack is component from back side to the front side. Is a, on the glass substrate, there is a thin layer of silver to act as a back conduct and then the carrier collector of zinc oxide and then a PN junction of crystalline silicon layer. And then on the front side is a very thin layer of ITO layer to, to act as an anti-reflect coating and the front carrier collector. We part on the front at back, part on the front and the back grating with a different lattice, lattice parameters. The front grating act, uh, designed to act as a uh, anti reflector structure try to reduce uh, reduce a global reflection and the back rating is designed to try to get high diffraction in large wavelength range. And then the front, uh, the front and back filling factor are fixed as 50%. Here the filling factor means the filling factor, uh, the air, area of air divided the area of material. And the etching depths and the front period and back period are optimizing these ranges. So, oh, because I only have a time minute, so I just skipped this uh, optimi optimization part just to do show the main result, okay? The optimized, optimized parameters for front and back rating are, are shown here, okay? Let's see the, <coughs> then I try to uh, compare the optical 
uh, try to uh, compare the absorption increase on second layer. We see that in this double grating structure, try to compare the absorption spectra in the crystalline layer with the, only with the front or only with the back grating. We see that in this, in this absorption spectra, we can, uh, okay. By the way, the TN polarization shows a similar trend as T polarization. So here I just focus on the T polarization to analyze this absorption spectra. And it, uh, when we see this uh, absorption spectra, we can divide it, uh, this absorption spectra into three main regions. In the short wavelength range, there's no obviously absorption peaks because the incident light can be absorbed by single parts. And in the mid middle wavelength range, there's several multiple, several regular mu uh, absorption peaks. And in the longer wavelength range, there's multiple irregular absorption peaks. But it's very hard to see, so let's zoom in a little bit for the, these three parts. In the short wavelength range, we see that the stack with the front grating, uh, black and the dot red curve, show high absorption than the stack without front grating, thanks to the anti-reflector effect of front grating. And uh, then in the middle wavelength range, we can see there are several regular absorption peaks. It's due to it's due to the fabric behold like resonances. And then the longer wavelength range, we see that the stack with the back rating shows multiple absorption peaks, then the stack without the without back rating, thanks to the back rating effect. And then we are trying to uh, using the same lattice parameter into 2D to calculate the absorption spectra again compared to the stack without any patterning. We saw that this double 2D grating shows even higher absorption than the double 1D structure. Of course, this double 1D and 2D shows higher absorption than the reference. Then we calculated the photocurrent density for the reference and the single pattern stack and also the double grating pattern stack. We see that double 2D shows higher, highest absorption than a highest short current density. When we compare to the reference, the improvement in this double grating, double 2D grating is up to 65%. And there is a, in such 1.2 micron thick crystalline silicon layer, the short current density is up to 30 micron MP per centimeter square. After we optimize this kind of structure, we are thinking how could we fabricate this kind of structure. Let's move on to the fabrication feasibility for the front and back diffraction grating assisted thin film solar cells. And uh, in our fabrication, we are mainly using the light holography lithography to try to get the 1D and 2D patterns in photosensitive resist and then transfer into the silica hard mask and uh, the component of uh, solar cells and uh, remove, remove the hand wafer, et cetera, by using the reactive ion chain and the wet etching. Uh, let's move on this fabrication uh, <coughs> into detail. Firstly, we generate 1D and 2D patterns on the photosensitive resist, then transfer into the uh, hard mask and the ITU and then into the monocrystal silicon layer by using the etching and, and uh, then we get a front grating. Okay, let's, uh, and then we are trying to move, remove the back handle wafer and get the, try to get the, uh, try to pattern the back grating by using a light holography, lithography, and the etching. Then we depth it to the uh, silver layer and uh, zinc oxide layer and uh, affix the, this double grating structure on a glass wafer. So, uh, finally, it's a conclusion. And the, the, I could say the front and back rating are optimized by considering the real fabrication feasibility and in a 1.2 micron thick crystalline, crystalline silicon layer, the short current density is up to 30 micron MP per centimeter square for the double 2D pattern grating structure. And also the front and back grating stacks can be tentatively fabricated by using the light holography, lithography, reactive IG and the and come in with several uh, deposition techniques. And finally, I'd like to uh, thank my colleagues from France and uh, Canada, and uh, thanks our funding to support my research on this top project. And thanks for your attention. <laughs>